Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, February 14th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. If you ever looked for a way to make packet analysis simpler, there is a great new website out there, packettotal.com. The site does allow you to upload a packet capture and it will then summarize it for you by running it through Pro and Suricata. Now, that part you could probably do yourself, but it also creates a real nice sort of graphic layout, a timeline and uh, splits out protocols and the like to explain kind of the traffic for you that it found in the packet capture. A real a nice site. I highly recommend that you give it a spin. Of course, do not upload any confidential information to it. All data that you upload to the site is being shared. With more and more websites implementing TLS, I think the latest numbers are more than 50% of traffic is taking advantage of some form of TLS or SSL. It has become more and more important, of course, to inspect that traffic. And one route many organizations take is to use proxies to intercept a TLS. Rob wrote a diary summarizing some of the lessons that he learned when he implemented a system like that. For example, what sites to whitelist and what type of TLS you will not be able to intercept without breaking applications. For example, if a certificate pinning is in place and the like, then of course the application will be able to figure out that it's being intercepted and it may no longer work. So if you're planning to do that, uh, take a look at uh, Rob's diary. And of course, I think a month ago I had a webcast uh, with some of the techniques and such you can use to inspect TLS traffic that uh, went a little bit beyond just intercepting a TLS. Now, since I mentioned Packet Total, the listeners who are mostly dealing with analyzing malware probably were wondering, well, what does he have for us? Well, there's a new tool that helps a little bit with initial triage when it comes to analyzing malware, the Simple Static Malware Analyzer. It's a Python 3 script that reads a file that you present to it and then pulls out a PE file headers, looks for entropy and sections in the PE file, also does string searches, submits details to a virus total, runs Yara rules, looks for packers, and a number of additional sort of simple automatic tasks to tell you a little bit about the particular malware without actually having to run it. And that's the key part here. This tool, of course, it's fast, it's simple, and reasonably safe because you don't actually have to run the malware and uh, given that it's a Python script it's also easy to automate uh, this particular process. Sure there's a lot that the tool will not tell you about a piece of malware but at the very least it will tell you whether or not it's worthwhile looking at this sample in more detail. And if you're running Firefox on Android, there's a critical vulnerability that has been addressed in version 51.0.3. Without this patch, Firefox leaves its cache directory world writable, which would allow an attacker to essentially write libraries and the like to that directory that Firefox would use. This, of course, would require that the attacker already has access to the phone, so it's more a privilege escalation vulnerability. And Ubuntu fixed a rather easy to exploit purge escalation flaw. This particular flaw affects NTFS 3G. NTFS 3G allows users to mount NTFS file systems to Ubuntu. And in order to do its job, first of all, it's SUID root. And secondly, it will load additional kernel modules as needed. To do so, it used mod probe, but it did not actually clean up the environment before running mod probe so an attacker would be able to run NTFS 3G and then trick it via mod probe to load arbitrary code into the kernel. Ubuntu has released a patch for this vulnerability and now it's providing mod probe with an 
empty environment, so this is no longer exploitable. And tomorrow, of course, is also Microsoft's patch Tuesday. Now, we still have the outstanding SMB3 denial of service vulnerability, so we'll watch if that gets addressed. But uh, kind of more importantly, Microsoft will also change how they are publishing these updates. There will no longer be a monthly security bulletin summary. There will probably still be individual bulletins from what I can tell, but uh, have to figure out how to do our summary there as well. So apologies in advance that the summary may show up a little bit delayed tomorrow. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.